Hello guys, my name is Roof and welcome back to Mission Possible Poker. Uh, like uh, pretty much every other episode, I have a few hands uh, lined up in my holder manager, which I've selected to showcase uh, this this weekend. Uh, some of them, uh, you know, are fairly standard uh, in the way they play out, but uh, there were decisions that I made in game which I thought were fairly interesting. So uh, let me begin by. Uh, taking what I think is possibly the, the simplest hand out of all of them. And uh, let's analyze that and see uh, if we agree with the past move. So let me wait for the stats to appear. I don't know why, but my holder manager seems to be lagging a little. There they are. Now, William 12 doesn't have a very uh, big stack. If you divide this by 50, I think... It's about 40 big blinds. Let's just quickly convert these to blinds. How does this work? Show chips and BP. All right. So Villain 12, who is fairly short stacked, uh, limps from uh, under the gun. And if you look at his stats, you can see that he plays a lot of hands. And when he does open, he is uh, fairly tight. But uh, in, in cases where he cold calls or limps himself, he is fairly wide. So with the hand uh, as connected as uh, ace, queen, jack, five with the ace high suit, I am totally comfortable squeezing this person's limp, which is what I do. Uh, will in eight uh, cold calls, which is not surprising because uh, there's a lot of cold calling going on in these... Uh, small to mid uh, stakes games on, on stars as well as other Indian websites. And we get to a flop where we flop the nut gutter and uh, the nut flush draw. Uh, villain 8 checks. Villain 12 decides to pot. And since we have the nut flush draw and we have uh, kind of the straight draws, it's kind of... Uh, uh, unlikely for him to be potting uh, uh, some sort of flush draw. Uh, he could have, uh, you know, a hand like 10 8 with uh, a gutter to go with it. But I feel like a hand like 10 8 with a gutter is, is a hand like maybe 10 8 uh, Queen Jack, which is sort of the hand, uh, you know, people like to open. Not really the kind of hand uh, people limp from uh, under the gun, especially if they have a suit. So I feel like uh, here doing anything else uh, besides uh, just calling is kind of a waste because we are drawing to the nuts and uh, right now we just cannot win the hand if we don't uh, hit our flush draw or our uh, gutter. All these things are considered, I do call. And uh, Willin 8 also calls, which is a fairly good thing because now I... Uh, he, I am led to believe that he also has a draw of some sort. I feel like if he had 8-10 uh, or, uh, you know, a, a 10 with a very good uh, redraw, I think uh, this is the kind of spot uh, people choose to uh, re-raise. Uh, re so I think uh, with his uh, call here, I think uh, if we do hit a hand, we will be in a fairly good position to stack uh, Villain 8. Uh, now, there's an absolute uh, blank on the turn, which is when Villain 12 shoves after Villain 8 checks. And again, I feel like the same concept applies. If I raise here, it's just doing me no favor at all. So instead of, of raising, which, you know, might be a standard for uh, some of the players out there, you know, certainly if I were playing very, very mindlessly, if, if I were playing five tables, I could have raised the flop, which I think would have been a, a massive mistake. So taking uh, that concept and uh, applying it on the turn, I feel like uh, calling is the only way to go. Should Villain uh, 8 reshove, uh, I think uh, we would have to uh, consider our options. But as of this moment, it seems kind of unlikely. So we are going to call and hope to hit uh, our river. Uh, as uh, expected, Villain 8 does call and uh, we hit uh, pretty much uh, one of the best uh, uh, 
uh, river cards. Now I feel like a flush might be better because uh, in a combination draw, I certainly expect villain eight to have some sort of uh, a flush. But uh, you know we could still get paid off uh, on on this card, although it does seem more unlikely than a flushing river. Now villain eight uh, now checks, and. Uh, we obviously aren't uh, splitting at this point unless villain 12 magically has a uh, queen jack as well. So I decide to do the only thing which you know there is which is to go for uh, all uh, all of uh, the money I can get by shoving all in. I think if I had uh, uh, more money behind I, I think I would have done the same with, with about 100 BP behind. So I do uh, shove and uh, thankfully I get a call and he ends up with a smaller revered straight. He also had a, a fairly dominated hand on the flop. So before we move on, uh, I think we just like to go back and check out uh, what the equities were on the flop. So if I turn on the whole guards. Uh, so we had 32, which is obviously uh, I mean, it's not bad, but obviously with this sort of equity without a quote-unquote uh, made hand, I feel like shoving is kind of uh, pointless. If I had an even bigger draw, even a hand like uh, Queen, Jack, Nine uh, with, uh, you know, the Ace, I think I would have still preferred uh, calling because uh, draw or no draw, we would want to make a hand because Will and 12 is going uh, in any way. And I, I don't think uh, in in case of uh, a river showdown, we'd ever win with ace high. So we need to make our hand. And I think uh, playing uh, our hand this way is uh, the only way to go. Uh, next up, I have something fairly uh, non-standard. And, uh, and let's see why I made this uh, play. So I open Jack 10, 10, 9, triple, which I think is absolutely fine from MP. Uh, villain 17 calls and Villain 5, whose squeeze is 18%, uh, decides to do his thing and uh, re-raise and squeeze. So I think calling here is okay. We're effectively about 100 BB deep with him. Our hand is extremely well connected and we have an okay suit. So we call and uh, the short stack folds. So far so good, so far so standard. I had expected villain five to be shoving this board uh, extremely often. But uh, when he checks it over to me and uh, I see that despite his uh, high squeeze uh, percentage, he doesn't shove this flop, it kind of leads me to believe he doesn't really have a big piece. So maybe a big uh, uh, rundown uh, that missed. I feel like aces would be shoving this flop fairly often. So uh, I did think of, uh, think of taking a stab with my gutter and backdoor flush draw, but I feel like getting shoved on is just absolutely disgusting. And uh, I'd rather see a, a turn. So he checks it over to me and I check back. And on the turn, uh, we get a straight on the board, which is 4-5. Uh, neither of us, uh, us uh, should have 4-5, but uh, if, if anyone, I feel like I should have it more often. So when Villain 5 does uh, decide to lead, and he does lead fairly big, I feel like calling here is, is kind of uh, wanting to make a decision on the river. And we really need to hit our hand. I mean, what if the river is a three and he shoves into me? Will I really be able to call? So instead, what I uh, decide to do is to shove in this spot because I feel like I have a lot of fold equity. I have discarded all uh, over pairs from his range. Uh, I have discarded most of the flush draws from his range. Uh, if he does have uh, diamonds, he is not really getting the odds to call. And I don't really want to just call and have an ace hit on the turn or a king or a queen. 
and you know he he checks it over to me and i check back and i see that uh, the reward uh, pair beats me so all these things considered and the fact that i feel like his range is extremely weak i feel like there's a lot of money in the pot so i think shoving here in in my opinion makes uh, the most sense uh this is one of those uh, out of line uh, spots in uh, pelo which the solver can't teach you so sort it of comes by intuition but uh, if you have some thoughts of your own on this matter you feel like uh, maybe calling was a better play or maybe stabbing the flop uh, was more positive ev then uh, do let me know in the comment section because this is a hand where you know there's not really one clear answer but uh, for all the reasons i had in my head at that time i feel like this was uh, the way to go calling i think is is not really playing this hand optimally all right that was hand number 2 and uh, hand number 3 is where i think i made a fairly big mistake um i limp uh, back i mean okay queen to the bad suit and i think that's okay uh, in a game which is fairly limp happy i do want to overset someone uh, i i do want to smash a low set Uh, my hand is connected in an okay way. The flush draw isn't big. I don't want to squeeze here and play heads up with William Forty, <coughs> but uh, I am uh, okay taking this uh, multi way. And uh, it gets to the big blind who who checks, and uh, he min leads. and uh, i wasn't really sure of what to do in this spot i mean calling is totally fine uh, when we hit a five he probably hits uh, some straights which is really good uh my kicker with the six isn't really all that great so uh, i raised here but i think in my opinion i mean looking back at it now I feel like this is not a raise. It, in fact, is simply a call. And uh, I mean, it gets uh, back over to this guy, and he he re raises, but he doesn't really go for uh, full pot. And uh, this is where uh, you know, in in my opinion, situ the situation gets really dicey. uh he could have pocket threes he could have 6 three this is a limp pot after all he could have had uh, a6 and i feel like with my hand i really need to hit the turn or the river because i don't think i can profitably call at this point not knowing where i am in the hand so with this uh, 50 bb stack i feel like this probably is a get it in but if he has a 100 bigs behind i think And, and this is going to sound really nitty and really tight. I think this as a fold is completely all right, because uh, when the hand goes uh, goes like this, it, especially in the limped pot, they show up with the goods uh, pretty much uh, all the time. I mean, no one's going to be shoving here with a hand like six, uh, six, seven, eight, jack, and even that hand has a fair bit of equity against us because we have a pair and we have a five. and we're not going to boat up fairly often so i think in a 100 bb situation unfortunately as weak as that sounds uh, this is uh, a fold in a 50 bb situation i think it can go either way but uh, you know like always if if you guys uh, disagree or if you guys uh, have a better way to play this hand uh, do let me know i did check with the solver though and uh, like i suspected uh i mean this isn't the exact situation uh let me just switch this to 50 bb uh in a 100 bb uh situation queen queen 5 6 is actually just a call it's not a raise uh before we move on we can check what happens with the other sixes so let's say we have a hand like um ace ace six deuce a hand which we did not raise a uh, preflop or three bet pre flop it's always a call what about a hand like ace king queen 
that's uh, always a raise makes a lot of sense you have three over cards uh, you could certainly be smashing his his range right now especially if he has a weaker six so that sort of uh, makes a lot of sense what about a hand like uh, six seven eight nine uh, that's always a call. Makes uh, sense because on boards uh, where you hit uh, boards, he might show up with a straight. Although he has opened from under the gun, so it's kind of unlikely. But still, as as a general rule, uh, these connected uh, trip hands are sort of slow play, especially when the card revolves around that uh, trip card. What about uh, middling hands? I feel like Jack, 10, 9, 6. Now, before I type in the 6, I feel like this will... Also be a call and not a raise. Okay, so it shouldn't be there. What about a hand like 6, 8, 9, 10? As suspected, it is in fact a call. And rarely, very rarely is it a raise. Alright. And what if we have a pair in our hand? So let's say we have a hand like 6, 8, 8, 5. That's a gutter, right? That's always a call. Makes uh, sense. What about a hand like 6, 8, 8, uh, 9? That is still a call. So as you can see, uh, only the strongest uh, sixes are raised. And the other sixes, well, they're sort of treated as bluff catchers. And uh, I feel like you wouldn't really be folding them on turns, on pretty much any turn. But I feel like uh, on rivers, you will have to take a call depending on what you think of your uh, opponent. Alright, uh, let's go to the 50 BB situation. Okay. This should be more of a raise in a 50 BB situation than it will be in. Uh, a 100 uh, BB situation. However, as you can still see, those middling sixes are still calls. Uh, obviously, the big sixes will uh, still, I mean, all right. So, uh, this is more of a slow play than it is a uh, raise as compared to the 100 BB situation. So, what sort of 6x uh, will raise? So, if I have a hand like queen, queen, 5, 6, which is sort of extremely uh, middling. Uh, we shouldn't have this hand because uh, this would probably be a 3-bet double suited and maybe a fold uh, single or rainbow. Kind of makes uh, sense. What about um, hmm, Jack no, 10, 9, 8, 6? Uh, that is still a call. So it seems like uh, none of the 6x hands which were raising in the 100 BB situation will be raising here. And this is more of a, a slow play than uh, the 100 BB situation is. Which kind of uh, makes uh, sense, right? I mean, the under the gun shouldn't really be having a lot of uh, straight draws uh, in this situation. Even if he does, a lot of those cards will give us boards. The cards that give him uh, the straight. So, I kind of agree with the 100 BB solution. And I think I definitely agree with the 50 BB solution. So, what I did in game probably wasn't uh, the most uh, ideal. But uh, let me know, guys, if, if you would have played this uh, any differently and what you would have done in hand number three. Uh, we can now move on to hand number four, and this is where it gets very interesting. So, again, a limped uh, pot. I feel like limping is, is fine with this hand. Uh, will a 9 uh, doesn't squeeze, that's something to note. And he does pot lead on ace-king 9. And uh, I wouldn't really re-raise here. He could certainly have kings, for sure. He, he could uh, have kings. Could also have a hand like ace-king, which, you know, I don't mind uh, stringing along. We're also fairly deep, so raising is kind of out of the question as of this moment. So my assumption is the weakest hand he shows up with is probably ace-king-queen-jack. Uh, uh, apologies, ace-queen-jack. Uh, but even that hand wouldn't part. So I think uh, his, his most likely holding is, is ace-king. And he certainly could have aces or kings in this spot. 
queen jack 10 is also a likely holding but then i block to 10 so there's that so when he does uh, check the turn i feel like uh, betting here and uh, considering uh, reverse would would be fairly interesting so i do uh, bet here uh, because i do want uh, value he certainly could have kings but i feel like he could also have a lot of ak so i bet the sizing so that i can get one more street from ak and uh, you know check back versus uh, kings which would probably get a street in any way on the river at least a blank river so he does end up calling and the river is uh, the jack where uh, you know ace 10 king 10 queen 10 jack 10 everything makes a, a straight and this is where he he pots and uh, again, while this might seem like a fairly standard call down uh, by most standards, I think it certainly was for me uh, six months ago, five months ago. But if you think about the kind of hands he was representing on the flop, all of them got there. So a hand like uh, Ace King will not bluff this river. A hand like King King, Bear King King will not bluff this river. If he did have uh, Queen Jack 10, he certainly uh, is, is beating me. And it is very likely for him to have a hand like Ace King 10. So I feel like this, while it does seem like a fairly standard uh, call uh, by most uh, standards, oh, that did not come out right. While this uh, does seem like a fairly standard call, I feel like uh, calling here ultimately is losing money because. His quote-unquote uh, made hands, which I believe is what uh, he held uh, majorly in his spotting range from, from out of position into four other players, have gotten here. And it's certainly very easy for him to have a straight at this point. So uh, this uh, was a fold for me. I, in fact, thought a lot about it and eventually folded. But uh, again, guys, before you call me a nit, uh, let me know what you think of the situation and uh, if you would always call or if you would give uh, your uh, opponent some credit in this spot. And uh, the last hand is uh, again a hand I'm not very uh, happy with. Uh, it's a limped pot. I think there's nothing here to do besides uh, limp. I don't think potting makes any sense. Unless this hand is double suited. Uh, we flop uh, middle set and we block uh, the small straight. So I go ahead and lead which is, I mean, it's kind of in the middle. I will be out of position. So I could see a case for betting this in position. But I feel like uh, leading is is not, not good. I, I disagree with uh, my previous play. Uh, I get raised uh, again by a guy who I feel like plays uh, fairly, fairly straightforward. So I do a uh, call, which I think is completely fine. And on the flushing turn, I decide to lead because I think he will fold any straight on this uh, King of Hearts River, especially since I've led uh, preflop. So any bear straight, in in my opinion, should be uh, in in uh, the muck when when I bet. However, he he decides to jam, and uh, you know I, I don't think I'm getting the right price as of this point. So I uh, I sort of lost some money to fancy play syndrome, but I feel like this works fairly often because uh, you know when he raised uh, the flop. A straight is what he was repping. Maybe he had a hand like, uh, you know, ace, ace, 10, 8 with hearts, which is certainly possible. Maybe a hand like ace, 10, 8, deuce with, with hearts certainly will uh, check back from the big blind, will not squeeze. So I think uh, I, I could have uh, checked uh, in, in this spot on the turn. Uh, maybe called a smaller bet because with the nut flush, he would have certainly bet uh, smaller. Called uh, a bet and you know tried to make a boat on the river. But uh, I, I did decide to go for the fancy play. And I think it makes uh, sense. It, it did not work out this time. 
but uh, you know i am quite uh, okay with uh, with my play so that's it guys uh, that's it for this week i hope uh, you you enjoyed uh, the episode and uh, you know i th- i think these hands are getting fairly interesting now so i certainly would love your input and obviously when you when you comment when you let me know your thoughts you certainly are contributing to this discussion and that way uh, both of us like uh, on on this side of the screen and and yours both of us can really really get uh, something out of these uh, videos so until uh, next time guys this is dhruv and uh, i'll see you next week maybe